She's an award-winning television and radio host, and she had to add another title to her CV, which is that of author. I'm very honored to speak to a journalism graduate, Carol Ofori. I just watched you present your show. Quickly give us a rundown. What does is, what is your day look like in the day you, you work on radio? Yeah, no, the day starts at around 5.30 in the morning, and it's waking up the kids, and then from there it's getting them ready, getting in the car, getting the school bags, all of that dance, and then it's drop off, and then get to the studios, and then radio show from 9 until 1. And then after that, depending, sometimes I have voiceover commitments. Now with this new book, I have other commitments. I eat they have my au pair stand in and help me or my mom or my husband, whoever is available to help with mm -hmm. the collection point. But sometimes I'm lucky and I can do the collection and do everything else. It's a lot. It's a lot. When I saw you created a book series, I was very excited. I'll tell you why. I started reading very late in my life. And the one thing that I instill with my little girls is reading. Mm -hmm. And they love books. I can see how they are not just mesmerized, but how they, they just journey with reading. So I'm looking at your press release, literally. I mean, you didn't bring out one book. No, she brought out a series. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> a series of six children's books. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about, no, tell me a lot about the African adventures of Sena and Katleho. It's it's a beautiful story. So when I wrote the book in 2016, I had a one-year-old who was Pan-African. Mommy is South African, me. Husband is Ghanaian by birth, but I've been living here since he's a child. Um, and here I was wanting to tell beautiful African stories to my wonderful African son, but I just couldn't find the content. You know, I couldn't find the content to break down to my child what Egypt is like on his level, what is Ghana like, what is Uganda like. And I wanted to raise children that when they say, mom, I want to go somewhere, the first place they mention is on the continent and not Paris or New York, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and have passionate African children about the continent. Um, one thing I always say is that I believe God didn't put us on this continent by mistake. He's put us on one piece of land for a reason, because we're dynamic, we're beautiful, we, we, have, we have so much to offer. Um, so that's when I started inking the book. I wrote the first one, which was South Africa. And at the time, I just thought that was the only book. Wrote the book, try to shop it around. Nobody was really interested. I was getting offers for self-publishing, but I was advised, don't do the self-publishing. Mm -hmm. Hold on to it. It's really a good story. And let's see how we go. And here we are, 2022, and the book is on the shelves. It's been a long six-year journey. Mm -hmm. uh, publishers only caught on two years ago and got in touch and said, would you like? And I thought it was a scam. I was like, ah! They've got me, the scamsters have got me. <laughs> and it was not the case. It was actually them and they had the manuscript. So when I met with them, I said to them, I like reading box sets to my kids. Mm. So I also want a box set. Let me do a series. And they said, timelines, can you do it? I said, watch me. Right. And I put my head down. Some of these countries I've been to, others I've done extensive research on. And these are the wonderful countries to visit. So we go to South Africa, mm -hmm. we go to Ghana, we mm. go to Egypt. Ooh. We go to Chad, we go to Uganda, and then we wrap up in Eswatini. So those are the first six. I love how you wrap up in Eswatini. So if you're listening to the podcast at this stage, she's literally paging through all the books that yes. uh, she's got with her uh, in hand. It's amazing that through, through because this is what we experienced in COVID, right? That we can travel through pictures. I, I have someone that when we're lucky enough and I have to do my performances, she does my lashes. And all the other times I just go with that, right? But... <laughs> She, she told me the most beautiful thing. She said to me, she's never been overseas. And the only way she gets to travel is through her client's stories. Wow. And she says she loves what she does because she gets to travel every single day by their experiences and the stories that they tell her. And here we have a book because some of us will never be able to get there. Right. But right. my children want to go to Egypt because they read stories about Egypt. Right. And now they'll be able to read your stories I could see that it is almost unbelievable that your dream came true. Yes, it is. I'm going to cry if I even go there. I don't believe that this has got anything to do with me. Because when I wrote the box, it was a far-fetched dream. I inked it on my laptop. I closed my laptop. I sent it off. And that was that. Four years later, this thing resurrected. I'm teary-eyed because I still can't believe that I go to an exclusive book. So I go to a cine and the books are there. It's beyond my comprehension. And I, 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 I'm, I'm, it scares me that it's really happening. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. It makes me think that 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 really anything is possible. It yeah. does it does make me feel it also makes me feel like um like dreams when they realize it's not quick, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's it takes time. Yours yours took four years to realize. Like your son is older now, you know. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think um, this was definitely a story for me to say to myself as a mom that I'm still an individual. I still have my own dreams. Yeah. I can I can I can change narratives, especially in the climate of South Africa and where we're living, and um, just the narrative around being an African and the dynamic conversations and the controversial conversations. Um, for me, it was so important for me to tell the African stories that children should know the stories of the remarkableness of the people we are as Africans. Africans and just to celebrate our being, you know, celebrate who we are and remind our children that we are in a very special place. I mean, everyone calls us the motherland. There's a reason why they call us the motherland and we should love ourselves. And that's why I wanted to, 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 to write these books. And when I see them, I get teary eyed because, you know, as much as I've wrote these stories, when I read the stories back, I feel like I'm reading them again for the first time. <laughs> Stay with us on our podcast. We're going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk more about the book. I want to know what it's like raising children who look different to other people. Uh, I called my children mixed and I was approached by another mom and she said, mixed with what? Uh, we're going to talk about that. Also, I want to know from Carol, what's it like being a mom in the media industry and where her support comes from? And then also the big question, what was the one thing, because it happened, what was the one thing that changed her life drastically? Stay with us on our podcast platform. I'm Alana. Next to me is Carol. You're amazing. You can find these books. It's a series, okay? In all exclusive books, we'll also put details in our social media post right now. Otherwise, check out our website, babybrunch.co.za.